in Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, um, we talk through some of these things. And so I just, we talk through these things. I'm going to post this later for you. But if I'm looking, if I was to preach, I want to talk about this. If I was to preach Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, I want to highlight for us these big ideas. So you have all these different components here and so you're like tim how can we break how can we have a basic outline okay and so i'm kind of giving you a, a, a large idea of like major point outline so if i was to preach this and i was to preach 10 verses number one point would be the description the description of of us and god so that's the first major point of of my of my of my preaching outline and then you can have sub points you can describe this you can go into detail fair enough but the big contrast in verses one to verse four is the contrast between our description and god's description is everyone tracking there with me that's the big the first major point what are we doing what is god doing okay then the second the second major point so this would be the second major point here is that in one to four, it's all these descriptive things. This is who we are. This is what we're doing. This is God. He's rich in mercy. He's full of love. Okay. And then the next major point is, okay, so it moves from this description to the actual work. There's there. And when, when, when I'm talking about work, I'm, I'm thinking specifically about action. So we talk about the work of God. We're talking about God's action. Okay. And so looking at verses five, verses five to seven, there's a bunch of actions here. And so we, the first major point is, uh, what is our status before our, before our salvation? Who we are? What is, God, what is God's state? Who is he? The second major point is the work of God. So look at this, verse number, verse number five. God made us alive. God raised us up. God seated us together in the heavenly places. So you see that? Uh, so there's three major actions here. Actually, you could include even four. God made us, let's just say here, God made us alive, number one. God has saved us by grace, number two. He has raised us up together with Christ, number three. And he seated us in the heavenly places. So those are four actions. And it's all the work of God. It's all the work of God. And the only work <laughs> that you could say you could say is our job of, of having faith, okay? You could say, oh, that's, that's our work. But if ever, if ever that would be a mistake, Paul spends verses 8, 9, and 10 explaining what God has done. So this is where we have now the third major point. So what we are before, what God has done, just hold your question. I will, I will answer. We can discuss questions. Let me just finish here. Okay. And then number three is we're, ex we're explaining, we're explaining what has been done for us in this salvation. And so you would be tempted to think that there's this component of faith that comes from us. And let me be clear. We have to exercise faith. That's not a question. The question is, where does faith come from? Faith is an action that we do. We have to cling. We have to believe. The question, though, is, is the source of faith coming from us or is it coming from God? And so then Paul clarifies where it comes from. This is not from you. This is a gift of God. This is not works. So literally, God does all the work. It's the work of God. We believe. And we can't even take credit for the belief. We have to do the, we have to believe, okay? I'm not saying we don't, we don't even have to believe. What I'm saying is, is that that source, the battery that allows us to, to work. Imagine the iPad, right? The iPad is doing the work. When I'm on the iPad working, it's doing the work. But what's energizing the iPad is not the iPad. It's the battery in the iPad. So imagine the, imagine the, the source of the iPad's working, that the source of our faith is not ourselves. It's the battery. So you can imagine the spirit or the work of God. And so just really briefly here, I, I wanted to further elaborate on here because there's this debate. You know, they're saying the question that, that Mark had asked before is, is faith from us, is it an activity? So I just, I added some things here. I'm gonna post this Lord by God's grace, Lord willing this week. Uh, 
Look at some other parallel passages that really, really shed life. Look at Hebrews 2.2. 2. If ever there is a question, Hebrews 2.2, 2, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. <laughs> you could say the source and perfecter, the source and completer of our faith. It's not from us. Do we have to believe? Yes. But the source of our faith is, is not from ourselves. Jesus is both the author and the perfecter. Look at this, Philippians 2, uh, 12 to 13. Work out your own salvation. See, we're doing the work, baby. No, <laughs> for it is God who is working in you. Work it out, figure it out. But when you do, recognize that the battery that has made this happen is not you. It's God who's working in you. And then there's other passages, but I'll just leave one other passage for you to contemplate here. It's sometimes worded difficult in the English. The Greek is unmistakable. And so this, this is always a plug that, Lord willing, next year, we're going to start having original languages. When I, when I have the time, we're going to have, do original languages. So those that want to, to learn Greek, next year is the year. Literal. Li this is very literal. Romans 12, 3. Each as God has distributed the measure of faith. <laughs> He's giving it out, baby. He's distributing that, right? <laughs> during, during, during political season, Psalm movies, right? Someone's distributing, right? <laughs> it's to be distributed, okay? So, and then we go out and we spend, right? So, joke one, it's a joke. But what I'm trying to get at is that the scripture is not, is not unclear in this question. It's very clear. Do we have to believe? Yes. Where does that belief come from? It's a gift of God. It's a gift of God. It is not from works. Now, grammatically, people will claim that the gift of God, this, this reference here, uh, this reference here, they're saying it just refers to your salvation, not the faith. But grammatically speaking, that's inappropriate because the this is actually referring to the whole clause. And through faith and by grace are modifiers of the main, the main action. So you can't say, oh, the action is not from you, but the faith is. Because if the faith is, then it's still partly from you. So it's, 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 uh, for, for those who want to say that the, this does not refer to the faith, it only refers to the being saved, that, that's a, it's a smoke screen. You're, you're muddying the waters. The whole point is that this process, grace, salvation, faith, it's a gift of God. It's a gift of God so that, so that no one can boast. If you can boast about your faith, that's what the text is directing about. No one can boast. No boasting, okay? And then lastly here, we have, uh, we are his workmanship being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has predetermined in order that we might walk in them. And so coming back to this main idea here, you have, I would have three major points. Who we are, Following the course, the power there, the, the spirit that's at work of the, in the sons of disobedience. That's who we are. Uh, children of wrath, sinners, reprobate. Who is God? Rich in mercy. So that, that the description of God and man, number two, the work of, of God in our salvation. And number three, the explanation of what has been done. There's an explanation of what has been done. This is not from us. And then there's also a goal. The purpose is that we would, we would, uh, we would, do good works. We would do good works. And so works are, is not part of our salvation. It's a result of our salvation. So fundamentally, if I was, if you ever have a question about the relationship of works and grace, salvation and grace, this is, so, this is all you need, brothers. It's clear who we are before, the work of God, the fact that nothing we do contributes. And then the end of this is good works. The end of this is good works. That's it. And, and don't be, let me be clear here. Don't be afraid. When you're preaching the gospel, you don't have to talk about all of these different things. I mean, you want to talk about where they are. You want to talk about the, the position that we're in, that we're, we're, we're blind, we're, we're, we're sinners. But just call people to believe because there's nothing wrong with calling people to believe. We call everyone to repent and to believe in Jesus Christ. 
But then once they do that and they ask, why am I doing this? <laughs> because of God's, because of Christ's work in us. And we, I guess the thing is that, is that we even do this subconsciously. When you pray for someone to have their eyes open and to believe, you are asking for God to intervene. <laughs> You're asking for God to give the faith. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, you know, functionally we're doing it. It's just, we're coming to the realization of what we're doing. Yeah, that's maybe that's a good, that's helpful. Yeah, so amen, amen.